Once upon a time, two twisted young sisters, aspired to have a lot of money, and spend it lavishly. However, they never made any effort to earn this money. So instead, they hooked up with drug dealers, or took money from their boyfriends. And when their secret was finally revealed, the sisters only considered the worst possible outcome. Even if the problem was, with Regina's boyfriend, indeed, the Stone Cold Killer sisters didn't give a damn. The two psychos allegedly lured Oscar Velasquez to their mother's house, and murdered him. The cold-blooded killers, shot Velasquez to death, wrapped him in a sheet, and set him on fire. Oscar was a hard-working and honest 22-year-old man. He lived in Dallas and made a living by driving trucks. The young man was doing well, always had a lot of cash on him, and had just bought a new Camaro Z28. Doing his thing, Oscar cruised around the courtroom with the new car when he met Regina and gave her a ride home. On the way home Oscar couldn't stop talking about himself and how he could pretty much make her happy. They started dating very immediately and Oscar was completely captivated by her to the point where he would do anything for her. However, he was unaware of the violent nature of her personality. Actually, when he first saw her outside the courtroom, Regina was being tried after being found in a gang member's apartment with two kilograms of cocaine. She had been subjected to a narcotics arrest and was released following a court hearing. She was standing outside the courtroom when Velasquez happened to drive by at that exact moment. By complete coincidence, Regina pleaded with him to give her a ride home, and he graciously agreed. Not long after that, the two started dating. After about a month, Regina called Oscar and told him that her sister, who was 16 at the time, needed a favor from him. Having the opportunity to help was a true pleasure for Oscar. She told him Regina was wrongly arrested and needed bail money to post. But it wasn't clear to Oscar that the bail money was meant for Regina's other boyfriend, who was now in jail. Oscar gave her $1,000 to save Regina, and then they went on a date, not long after her lover was allowed to leave jail. She told him maybe in a week or so, she would repay him. And about a week later, Oscar came to Regina and asked for the money. She pretended she was unable to collect the money, and then tricked him into a threesome with Margaret and her. Oscar wouldn't say no. He showed up to pick up Regina, at 8 that evening, June 6, 2000. Maybe they go out on a date, and potentially start their sexual dating. But Regina was not yet ready, she stayed on the upper floor, and Oscar waited with Margaret, and a friend downstairs. A short while later, Regina went to the basement, as Oscar followed close behind. When they were down in the basement, he was talking to Regina, when Margaret ambushed him from behind. She shot him in the back of his head, and he died instantly. They then looped his body, and got almost $600 in cash, a silver necklace and his keys. After cleaning up the crime scene, the sisters wrapped the body in a bedsheet, and put it in the trunk of the Camaro. The girls then jumped, into the Camaro, and after some cruising around, they stopped the vehicle in an empty lot. Regina then made a decision to dispose of Oscar's body. She covered him with nail polish remover, and the body was set ablaze. When an unidentified person called 911, and reported a fire in the parking lot, he went outside to pour water on the blaze, and then he found an arm in the debris, and called 911 again. Unfortunately, the cops couldn't recognize the body, or even collect any evidence from the scene. The females then fled in the Camaro, and then tried to sell it. After a few unfortunate attempts, they also set it on fire. While the investigators were trying to determine who the victim was, they also looked for a motive. A little over 36 hours after the murder, Velasquez's mother was the one who positively identified her son, as the victim of the heinous crime. The police tried to look into the young man's history, but it was all clean. He had no criminal history, and hated all gangs. He was what you would call a nice, clean-cut kid. Even his mom couldn't recall anyone, who hated him, or wanted him hurt. As the investigation progressed, the detective's attention shifted to Velasquez's Camaro, which had vanished at some point during the investigation. That's when three different witnesses, said that two young women were driving the car. 
When the vehicle was eventually found, it had been completely gutted and set on fire, so that it could not be used as evidence. A thorough investigation found no fingerprints or other evidence that might be used as a lead for the investigation. But they now knew. This person is trying to cover their tracks by burning the body and then the car. And there is currently no evidence. However, Velasquez's phone records gave the investigators a crucial piece of information, as they allowed them to review the conversations he had in the hours leading up to his death. Investigations led them to Regina de Francisco, a 17-year-old, living in Pilsen with her sister Margaret, 16, and their single mother, Nora. There, the sisters supported each other's stories, which exonerated them of suspicion. During her interview, Regina insisted that she was innocent of the crime, and suggested to the detectives that they look into Rivera. In the end, Rivera was cleared, and the 17-year-old girl's plan was intended to divert attention away from her. Instead, it intensified the problem and worsened the situation. Investigators concentrated their efforts on Regina, and also explored the possibility that Margaret was involved. A week after the murder, authorities had sufficient evidence to secure a warrant to search the De Francisco residence. And the search actually revealed several warning signs. They found considerable remnants of blood that had been cleaned up in the basement, also the shell case of a bullet that matched the one used to kill Oscar. On the other hand, a witness had already come forward and stated that they had seen three people putting a weighty object into Velasquez's trunk. And this was the last piece that was missing from the puzzle. Who was the third person that was seen approaching Velasquez's car on the night of the murder? Veronica Garcia, a 15-year-old friend of the girls, was questioned by the authorities on June 22nd. She became evasive and clammed up when asked about the events of the evening. But after law enforcement told her she faced the possibility of being prosecuted for murder, she described the events that transpired before and during the homicide. Then they placed Oscar's body in sheets, discarded his car, drove him to an empty lot, and then set him ablaze. By the time investigators proved beyond a reasonable doubt that Velasquez's blood was found in the De Francisco basement, the sisters were long gone. In July of 2000, U.S. Marshals began the search for the two twisted sisters. A few months had passed, and the girls were nowhere to be found. The authorities requested assistance from America's Most Wanted to raise awareness about the two missing fugitives. But the airing did not result in any successful leads, and the investigation was eventually abandoned. But in March of 2002, the show was featured once more, and the authorities were given a reprieve. During that time, the girls got tattoos and changed their looks. But authorities were able to locate Margaret in Roscoe, Illinois. She was transported back to Chicago to face the legal consequences of her actions. After seven months, Regina was also located in Dallas, Texas. She was arrested for driving a stolen car after a police chase. Regina and Margaret de Francisco were tried in July of 2004. The women entered not guilty pleas, citing self-defense as their justification. Veronica Garcia was the most important witness for the prosecution of the Garcia sisters. She had reached a plea bargain with the state's attorneys, agreeing to plead guilty to the reduced charge in exchange for testifying against the sisters. She testified that she did not have any prior knowledge of the murder and that she expected her boyfriend's gun would be used in a robbery when she gave it to the sisters. Garcia also claimed that she did not know the victim had been murdered. Garcia stated that Velasquez was apparently armed, although neither the murder weapon nor Velasquez's weapon was located. The testimony of Garcia was supported by the testimonies of witnesses for the prosecution. The jury deliberated for six and a half hours before deciding that Regina de Francisco was responsible for the homicide that occurred during an armed robbery. However, the jury that was deliberating Margaret de Francisco's case was unable to find her guilty. Margaret was then granted bail and released from detention one day after Regina was found guilty so that she could await her own trial. Margaret's retrial began four months after the conclusion of her initial trial. Garcia was again a witness in the second trial, giving the same testimony as in the first trial. 
Margaret de Francisco, on the other hand, was found guilty of first-degree murder following this trial. In September 2004, Regina de Francisco was given a sentence that would put her behind bars for the next 35 years, and she will not be eligible for parole until 2037. In December 2004, Margaret de Francisco was given 45 years behind bars. She will not be eligible for parole until 2050. Both of these ladies are currently detained at the Dwight Correctional Facility. Veronica Garcia was given a sentence of five years in prison for her participation in the murder. After completing her sentence, she was granted her freedom. The De Francisco siblings have each filed unsuccessful appeals. And deep down, I pray that it will always be unsuccessful. The psychopath sisters decided to mess with that young man's life for just a few hundred bucks. Pretty sure they would do it again and again.